Hello everybody, hey it's Dan Stevers. Um, so I've got a pretty cool tutorial today. Over the past two months I've been um, working on motion loops and these are uh, kind of new things for me. Up until this point I've just done sort of the short film kind of uh, video but I've been working on uh, these motions that are that are great for behind for like concert backgrounds or uh, you know for during worship to put the lyrics behind uh, them to make it uh, a little more dynamic. And uh, I've been working on uh, the looping techniques for these, and uh, I've, I've kind of learned a lot over the past few months figuring out how to make seamless loops uh, in these videos. So I'm going to be showing you a couple techniques of uh, looping uh, any sort of video clip. And uh, so let's get right to it. First thing you're going to want to do is go to my site and download this free time lapse pack. This is what we're going to be working with here. Uh, so go ahead and uh, just download that and then once you've got that open it up and we're going to be using uh, under clouds uh, this file called wheat field so go ahead and bring that into After Effects okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new composition out of this wheat field uh, clip here so we're just gonna take that clip and drag it down to this new composition button here let it go Okay, so the first technique that we're going to be doing is just like a simple fade. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to sort of the middle of the video clip. It doesn't have to be exactly the middle. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, duplicate this layer. So now I have two of the same layer. And on the top layer, I am going to hold Alt or Option. Um, and I am going to push the right closed bracket symbol and this is right above the quotation and apostrophe key so push the right bracket and that's going to bring in the end of our our layer uh, to where our marker is and then we're gonna do the uh, reverse on the layer below so we'll select that layer then I'm gonna hit alt or option and then I'm gonna click the left close bracket symbol um, so right now uh, if we we have a problem because we have two frames that are overlapping um, and so this would create uh, duplicate frames in our loop and that would create a bit of a, a stutter so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these uh, one of our layers and just drag the um, handle over until both of our layers are sort of uh, butting up to one of each, uh, one another there okay so uh, the way that we're gonna make this work is we're going to drag the uh, bottom layer to the left and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down shift and this is gonna snap it to um, to the beginning of the timeline and I'm gonna drag this one over here and I'm gonna leave about a second overlap on the top layer so what I'm gonna do in order to get this wheat field to loop is I'm gonna fade this um, I'm gonna fade this top clip in so I'm going to uh, set a keyframe for the opacity. I should uh, explain what I'm doing. So I hit T to bring up opacity. And then I'm setting the stopwatch to, uh, to enable opacity. I'm hitting zero at that first keyframe. And then I'm gonna bring it on over. Uh, I can hold shift and this will snap me to the end of the bottom layer there. And then I'm going to hit 100%. Okay, so we just created our first uh, loop out of this video clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna snap on to the end of the top layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard and uh, the letter N, which will bring in the end of our, uh, of our um, work area here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to play this and so what we've got here is we just created a loop and so this is uh, just a simple fade so uh, it's uh, nothing fancy but depending on the video clip that you're working with uh, this may this may be an option to get your video clips looping there's gonna be some uh, times when when this is not gonna be the best option like if your video clip starts out really light and then ends really dark like if this were a sunset you know and uh, and, it, and the clip got really dark by the end because if you tried to loop that it would just be clear that it was um, going from light to dark and then light to dark but on a video clip like this where it kind of stays the same sort of tone the whole time uh, this is a, is a really good option for it um, now 
what matters with the loop is the very end and the uh, the beginning and the end frames here. So we could actually adjust this um, middle middle um, fade here to be as long as we want. It doesn't it doesn't matter. As long as the end and beginning frames are the same, then our loop is going to work uh, every time. So this is just going to be increasing the fade, and this might make it so you don't notice the transition, because that's what we're after with these loops is we're trying to uh, make it a loopable video clip so you don't see uh, the seams to it, so you don't see that it's like uh, sort of restarting again and again. Um, now I'll show you one uh, little little technique that you can add on to this um, technique. So uh, there, uh, there have been some uh, instances where I found that the fade was a little bit too noticeable. So uh, what I was able to do is uh, add a mask to it. So I'm going to go up and grab the pen tool here. So select that. Select the top layer with the fade on it. And what I'm going to do, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit more, is I'm just going to do like a diagonal uh, sort of shape here. And I'm going to connect that. If I, if I turn off the bottom layer um, and I and I scrub through this. Right now, uh, we're still seeing the whole video clip. But what I actually want to do is I'm going to select this layer and hit MM, uh, which is going to open up the mask properties. And I'm going to uh, set a keyframe for the mask. And I'm going to drag this keyframe and hold Shift uh, so I get it at the very beginning of the uh, which call it layer here? There we go. Um, and so what I'm going to do when I'm on this when I'm on this last frame here uh, is I'm going to just double click on the mask, and then I'm just going to bring it over. I'm just going to drag it until it's pretty far outside of the screen, and I want to make sure I clear the frame by a good amount because we're going to be adding a feather to this, so we don't want it. And actually, I think I'm going to adjust the beginning here so so it's uh, so the mask is a little further out. Um, so what we need to do right now is the mask is set to add right now, meaning that everything inside of the mask is going to be visible. But what we want to do is we want to do the reverse of this and we want to set the mask to subtract. So this way it's going to be revealing uh, the video clip rather than um, hiding it. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to add a mask feather to this. And I'm just going to go big. I'm going to go something like 600, maybe 700. Um, so what this is going to do is this is going to create a nice gentle uh, wipe as, uh, as the video clip is fading in. It's going to be wiping across. And you know this is just one more way to try to sort of hide the seams uh, on our motion here. Um, so if I uh, go ahead and do a preview of this and the new version of After Effects uh, CC 2015 has a pretty cool RAM preview that just lets you push the space bar. So that's uh, that's what I'm rocking right here is, uh, is that. So let's check this out. So what it's going to be doing is it's going to be wiping, slowly wiping from side to side. And this, uh, this uh, creating a mask and doing a wipe as you're fading in is, uh, is just one more way to sort of hide the seams. And I mean, you can you can kind of feel that it's still wiping across there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if I can make this transition just really long. Um, I'm going to line these keyframes up; they're a little off. I'm going to just make this pretty long because the smoother and the slower it is, the less it will be noticeable. Um, so I think I think this is going to make a a really nice. Uh, really nice you know that that looks really nice I mean if you're looking for it you can see it but if you're not if you're not really looking for it you don't really notice it and you know I might even up the mask feather to like a thousand or something um, that might make it less noticeable um, but yeah, so that's that's a simple fade technique for looping video clips. You just splice the middle of the video frame and then just uh
So here's a motion that I was having a hard time doing the uh, just the simple fade on, uh, just with straight opacity. Uh, it just was looking mushy when I was just fading uh, in between it. Um, so uh, one uh, the solution that I that I uh, came up with that with with this motion was uh, similar to uh, what I did on the last motion with the mask here. But what I did is I started with a uh, a mask. Um, and uh, I just I just drew a big oval and I had it sort of expand as the uh, as the uh, motion was fading in. So this this helped sort of cover up the seam. Um, and it's not perfect, but but it, it uh, it's better than the um, it's better than just a straight a straight um, fade in. Uh, so this is an example of, of using a mask in combination with the uh, opacity. One of the best uh, filters to use to get a, a looping motion is going to be fractal noise. So we're going to go ahead and do, uh, play around with some fractal noise. So we're going to uh, make a new composition, 1280, 720, 30 frames. Let's go with uh, 10 seconds long. And so what we need for our fractal noise is we need to go up to layer and make a new solid. Uh, make it the comp size. So we are going to add, going to go down to noise and grain, and we're going to add fractal noise. So uh, fractal noise is a super easy um, filter to loop. Uh, what we need to do in order to loop is we need to uh, play around with the evolution. Now looping only works with evolution and I'll show you the drawback to uh, this technique um, and I'll show you another workaround to play with fractal noise but first we're going to play with the evolution. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the timeline and I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to hit U to show my keyframes and then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to go to 10 seconds and I am going to let's say 3 make our evolution three. So right now uh, we have our evolution um, animating. Problem is that the beginning and the last frame, if you scrub to them, you can tell they're not the same. They don't look the same, which means that it's not going to be looping. So uh, what we need to do to, in, in, to enable looping is go down to evolution options, and then we're going to turn on cycle evolution. And what we're going to do is since uh, since we set our evolution to three at the very end, that's what we're gonna to wanna to do our cycles in revolution two. We're gonna set that to three. If we set our evolution to 10, we would set this to 10 as well. You just wanna match whatever your ending evolution is. So now if I render that last little bit here, um, let's see, let's get this going. So what this does now is it makes the uh, beginning and the very end frames um, identical. So once it gets to the end here, we'll notice the that it uh, loops around. But if you notice real carefully, once it gets to the very last frame there, you're, uh, if your computer is fast enough, you're gonna know a little skip, notice a skip right there. It just, it's really, it's really uh, subtle, but it, it is there. And the reason it's, it's skipping at the end or sort of stuttering is that it's actually duplicating the very last frame. So this frame and this frame are identical. They're the exact same frame. So what we need to do in order to get around that is we're gonna zoom into this uh, very last keyframe. I'm just pushing the plus button on my keyboard to zoom in to my comp. Is I'm gonna take this keyframe and I'm gonna drag it over one frame and what this is going to do is this is going to make it uh, so that so that we're getting a, a, a proper loop here and we're not getting those duplicate frames at the end. And that's sort of how you work around that, that little uh, stutter issue. So right here, we notice that uh, there is no longer the stutter there. So the fractal noise is looping perfectly. And you know, fractal noise is a really uh, great plugin um, to add. Um, just some texture to photos like if you, it it's a it's a really easy way to um, I'm gonna take this picture I have here you can just drop whatever picture you want in there uh, but I'm gonna set the um, set the uh, set the mode to let's go to soft light here and uh, so 
fractal noise is a great way to um, just to add a little bit of movement uh, and a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of interest to a, a still photo. It's not the most dynamic thing, but um, but you can use fractal noise in combination with other filters and other sort of animations that are going on in your composition. It's probably a little bit too intense right now. I would probably knock this down to like 25%. And this way you're getting just real, real subtle, um, real, real subtle movement. So uh, there you go. That's uh, that's how to loop fractal noise. But uh, I'm gonna set my opacity back to 100. I'm gonna change the mode back to normal and delete that photo I just added. So we're back to where we were before. Here's one of the problems with um, with fractal noise and trying to loop it is I can only play around. I can only animate the evolution here. If I try to do anything like offset the turbulence. Uh, and move it that way if I want if I want it to be moving across the screen or something um, I'm gonna run into a problem that the uh, the loop is not gonna work properly so once it gets to the end here it's going to it's gonna pop back so we're we, we just broke our loop here by playing around with the offset turbulence um, so the way that we could um, make this into a loop is we could treat this the same way that we did with our, in our previous example with just the simple fade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command Shift C and that is going to pre-comp this layer. We want to make sure to uh, move all attributes into the new composition. And so we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. I'm going to hit Option right bracket on this layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to drag the end of the layer out. I'm gonna. Um, I, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna uh, do it a different way than I did before. I'm gonna hit page. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna hit page. What am I hitting? I'm hitting page down. <laughs> okay, page up and page down, uh, and that lets you uh, sort of move one frame at a time. So I'm gonna hit page down until I get. Um, to the to where I to where I want it to the marker head and I'm gonna hit option and then the left bracket so there we go we've set up our loop so I'm gonna drag that one end to one side holding shift and then I'm gonna drag the other end to the other side and it doesn't matter which one is on top uh, doesn't matter uh, and we're going to uh, put our fade in there um, so this this is a way that you can get around that that issue with uh, with playing around with offset turbulence or anything in the transform uh, properties uh, with the um, with fractal noise. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a way to loop your fractal noise in the same way that we. La so one of the cool things about working with fractal noise and. Uh, 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 things that other than video clips like we were working with before is we can actually easily adjust the timing of these things uh, I can uh, I can adjust how fast or how slow it is and the way uh, that I can do that easily is I'm just gonna select both of these layers I'm gonna hit command shift C I'm gonna move all attributes into the new composition and I want to adjust the composition duration to the time span of the selected layers that's important there um, if you don't have this option, if you're working in earlier versions of After Effects, what you can do is uh, just set the the, the end uh, marker there, and then just right click on this area above the uh, composition and just go Trim Comp to Work area. So there you go. Uh, so we're gonna do that again. So select both, Command Shift C. Uh, all that looks good. Now I can uh, I can right click on the layer and I can go to time and I can go to enable time remapping and now I've I've got two keyframes here so what I could do is I can just uh, push this in I could grab the right one and just uh, push it in and what that's going to do is that's going to make this uh, now the duration rather than nine seconds uh, it is now three seconds long so if I want to loop that I'm just going to hit shift until it snaps onto that end keyframe marker there. 
uh, now you'll notice that the um, that we're at, that we're black here on this last keyframe, and that's because we need to move one frame up. So I'm going to hit page up, and that is going to move the playback head one frame over. And now I'm going to hit N on my keyboard, and that's going to um, move the work area end over. Now if I um, now if I play this back, uh, now we just adjusted our our composition so that the loop is now a lot faster. We could do the same thing if you wanted to, if you like worked on your motion and then you realize everything's going a little too fast. I, I could drag the marker the other way. I would just have to increase the uh, duration of my comp here um, under composition settings there and drag out the head and then drag over the marker, hold shift go page up to go one frame over and now we just made this um, take about twice as long so uh, this is one of the benefits of working with uh, filters like this is that you can just easily uh, time remap the layers and they will look uh, perfect they will they will not look time remapped at all all right so now we're gonna get on to looping particles and uh, first we're going to do it in just the particle playground, the built-in particle system in After Effects, and then we're going to do it in particular. And it's the same uh, principle, and it works in any of these uh, particle uh, simulators. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. Uh, let's see, how many seconds do we want this? Let's just go with 10 seconds long. And we are going to create a new solid. And we are going to put, I'm going to go down to simulation and go to particle playground. And so this makes a little red stream of particles here. So the way uh, we loop particles, it's super easy. And uh, honestly, I my mind can't even really comprehend how it works, but it do, it works, and so I just go with it. So I can't explain it, but this is just how you loop particles. Uh, so I'm going to go up to Canon, and at the very beginning of our timeline, I'm going to set a keyframe for particles per second. I'm going to hit U, and uh, now that, since our composition is 10 seconds long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to five seconds, and I'm going to set a keyframe for zero. And now I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to uh, draw a marquee around them. And then I'm going to right click on them and on the keyframes. And I'm going to go to toggle hold, uh, hold keyframe. And so what this is going to do is rather than a gradual decrease in our particles, it's going to go from, it's sort of like a spigot and it's on the whole time. And then once it hits this one, the particles turn off. And so they transition out. Now the, the thing that's most important uh, in looping these particles is to make sure that all the particles are off the screen by the time we get to the end of our composition here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the layer and I'm gonna hit Command Shift C to pre-compose, move all attributes in. And pre-composing makes this so that we can make changes to our particle layer and we're not gonna have to make the same changes twice. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to five seconds and actually I'm gonna go a frame before the five seconds uh, to 429 because I'm at 30 frames a second I'm gonna option right bracket on the, that layer and we're doing the same thing we did on the simple loop I'm dragging this one over and I'm gonna page down and I'm gonna option left bracket so that way uh, just like we wanted it before we're not having overlapping frames there so I'm going to take this top layer, I'm going to drag it over and hold shift until it snaps into place where it should be. Holding shift again to snap to the end of these layers. I'm going to hit N to bring in the work area end. And now we have a, uh, I can do a render here. We have a seamless loop of these particles here. And like I said, I don't really know how this works, but I don't really care because it works. Woohoo! Um, so uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to break this loop. I'm going to play around with the particles until it breaks, and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. So if I double click and go into the pre-comp here, uh, I'm going to play around with this stuff here. Let's, to be honest, I don't actually, uh, 
I don't actually use uh, Particle Playground. I've always just used um, I've always just used uh, Trap Code Particular. It's a lot. It's a lot more powerful of a uh, plugin. You can do more with it. But this one's free, so it's hard to argue with free. Uh, so let's see here. I'm I'm just gonna play around with the force. Maybe the force random spread. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. See here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to play around with the particles until I get to a point where the particles are no longer completely gone by the end of the by the end of our um, composition here. Uh, so one way I could solve this is I could grab this uh, middle um, keyframe here, and I could uh, let's see. Here. Man, I'm gonna have to drag it all the way over to the end here. I think that I uh, screwed this up here. So let's go with, uh, I'm gonna undo this stuff until I, okay. So so uh, I think I broke it too much. See, this is the problem with me not, um, with me not using this uh, plugin enough here. So if I turn down the gravity, there we go. All right, so I just adjusted the gravity. I put it down to 50 here. So now the particles are no longer out of the frame by the time we get to this, uh, the end of our composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this last uh, keyframe here, and I'm going to drag it over until I get it to a point where all of the particles just disappeared. So this is one way to keep your particles going. But you'll notice if we go back to our composition here, <laughs> what we're gonna get now are, are we're gonna get like little spurts so it will loop but it's gonna look like little spurts and maybe that's what you want but my guess is it's probably not what you want so I think in order to make this loop properly we're gonna have to go back into our composition here and we're at 10 seconds right now for this composition so I'm actually gonna make it 20 seconds and I'm gonna drag out the end of the end of the layer. I'm going to go to the 10 second mark, 10 seconds, and I'm going to uh, drag my second keyframe back to that point there. So we'll see if the keyframes are now fully out by the end of this uh, composition. And they are. So, But see, you run into a problem if your particles uh, are showing at the end of the layer, but you also run into a problem if they go if they uh, disappear too quickly. So what you want to do is you actually want to find the point where you can drag over the keyframe until until the particles are sort of you want your particles to be remaining until roughly the end of the timeline. So. Uh, so that looks good there. So now we need to go back into our um, main composition. So like I said, just make sure your particles are sort of uh, going sort of right to the end there. So go back into the main comp. Now we, we're going to delete uh, the top comp. We'll, state, we'll leave the one with the marker uh, set to 0 there. I'm going to change my composition settings here to 20. So we just need to do the same thing that we did the first time that we did this. We need to set our marker to 10. And I'm going to page up. And then I'm going to option right bracket, duplicate uh, with Command-D, drag the layer over. I'm going to page down, option left bracket. And then I'm going to scoot this layer over until it uh, lines up. I'm going to shift and hit N at the end of that composition. So now we got our particles looping again. Even though we made our particles take longer, in order to get the loop working correctly, we just had to increase the length of our composition. So now we, uh, we've got this layer um, looping. So let's check it out once the render is done here. Should be working good if we did everything correctly. Look at that. So we've got our our nice little fountain of little 
red jelly beans. And there you go. So that's a that's a perfect loop of that. Now if you use Particle Playground, you can make something awesome looking and this is just the technique to loop it. So I'm going to jump in and make a new composition and we're going to do this same thing with Particular. Um, it works exactly the same. So I'm actually going to do this very fast uh, just to show you that it, it works properly. I'm going to add my Particular, change it to box increase that, increase that, let's see here, what do I even want to do here, let's go to our particle, do the opacity over life, there we go, I've got little particles, they're fading in, looks great, um, so I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to set a, I'm going to set a keyframe, for my particles per second. Change that to zero. Toggle hold keyframe. Particles come in, particles leave, but the particles are leaving too fast. So I'm gonna drag this over until I get it to where the particles are. Um, particles are not leaving before they ought to but they're still in at the end, so I need to drag it over till they are gone. So, uh, I'm gonna pre-comp this, great. Doing the same exact thing I did before. Oh, let's see, I did something wrong there. Because they are not lining up, let's see here what you get when you try to work too fast. So how's your day going? Hopefully well. Um, okay, so now we should be getting our loop here. And so I just did the same exact thing that I did in Particle Playground. I just This time I did it in uh, Trap Code Particular. Just make sure that your particles sort of go to the end, but don't overlap um, in the end. Um, so there you go. There's There are looping particles. Um, that's just another technique. You can do a motion now with looping fractal noise and looping particles. And uh, this is just one more option. For Okay, so what about if you want to loop, um, not one of those filters, but what if you just want to do an animation with some masks? Uh, animating masks and loop those. Uh, so that's what I did in this motion here. I just have some masks and they're uh, slowly moving across the screen. And so we're going to uh, loop some masks right now. So we're going to go to new composition. You know the drill by now. Um, all that looks good. And we're going to go to a new solid. And we'll make it a white solid here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a thin little mask here at the bottom. And I'm going to twirl down my mask properties. And I'm going to set a keyframe for the mask path. Now I'm going to go to four seconds. And I want to go to, hey, is my wife texting me? Um, so uh, let's see, I'm going to go uh, to, uh, I'm going to double click on this mask here. And that's going to select all of it. I'm going to shift drag it up and let's see here I'm going to deselect that I'm just going to grab the top of the mask and I'm going to make it really really wide up the up here at the top now I want it to go out of the screen completely that's important uh, but I want it to get big so it's starting small on the bottom and now it's getting bigger as it goes towards the top here and that looks pretty good so this is going to be the basis of our looping mask animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compose this layer. And I always am a big fan of pre-composing because 
if you're going to duplicate a layer a lot of times it's best to pre-compose it first because if I wanted to go in and make changes to that mask animation I could do that easily uh, by having it pre-composed. If I add tons of layers with that mask animated on it I'd have to adjust all of those layers and that would be a pain in the butt. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to one second. Now this is important that we get these times really accurate so we're at one second here. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to grab the layer, move it over, hold shift, and that's going to snap it to that one second mark. I'm going to go over two seconds. I'm going to command D, and I'm going to do the same thing. And now I can select all three of these layers, duplicate those, drag them to the top, um, and I'm duplicating by hitting command D. And now if I go to the three second mark, I can just shift drag those there. Now if I just select all of those, oh my gosh, this is getting crazy. I can just take those, drag those to the top, and go over, let's see what am I at, I'm at six right now, six seconds. So now I've got all these uh, layers basically doing the same thing there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll just set the end of my my time uh, let's do an even 12 seconds there, put the end marker there. I'm going to hit N to bring in the work area. I'm going to right click on the work area bar up here. I'm going to go trim comp to work area. I'm going to select all these layers. Now I'm going to command shift C to pre-compose them. Move all attributes, adjust composition duration. Looks good. Um, so what I want to do right now, this is this is where it takes a little bit of detective work is I'm just gonna go to the, uh, let's go to like the four second mark just to make sure that we, uh, that all of the masks are gonna be in where they need to be uh, for the loop. So I'm gonna hit B to bring in my um, work area begin beginning point there. Now the way that I'm gonna find uh, a loop point for this is I'm actually gonna take a snapshot. So there's this little camera button here, and this is actually a super handy tool, and I use it a lot uh, for, for different reasons here. But I'm gonna click it, and that will take a snapshot. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hunt over here until I find uh, something that lines up with it perfectly. So if I hit, if I hit F5, what that's gonna do is when you hit F5, that's gonna show the snapshot that you just took there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the exact frame where it where it matches up. And I'm hitting page up and page down, and then I'm hitting F5 until uh, I find the frame. Oh, and I found it right here. So I'm hitting F5 to show my snapshot, but it's not changing at all, which means I'm on the exact frame. So now, like, like we've been doing on all the ex examples, though, we don't want the exact frame. What we want is the frame before this frame. So I'm going to hit page up, which is going to go the frame before that frame, and now I'm going to hit N to bring in uh, the end of my work area. So now I have got a perfect loop here. So this is essentially what I did on, uh, on that motion that I showed in the beginning. I just did it with triangular masks. Uh, so you can, do, you can do it with whatever kind of mask you want. Um, now, I think, it, it, I think it's moving a little fast for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Let's see here. There's multiple ways we can do this. I will just shift drag till I snap onto the front. Option left bracket. Shift click. Option right bracket. Uh, now I'm going to right click on that layer. Actually, sorry, I'm not. I'm going to command shift C to pre-compose and adjust duration of, of the time span of the selected layer. Now I can just uh, right click on that and go to enable time remapping. And I can drag this uh, front keyframe. What I'll want to do is I'll want to get my marker over here because uh, keyframes can't just snap to the beginning of, a, of the comp. Uh, so I'm going to grab that and now hold shift and that'll snap it to the beginning. I'm also going to hit B to bring my work area start there. And then I can also hit alt um, left bracket. So Alt, left bracket just uh, sets the layer time at the beginning. You could also just drag it if you want. So now I just uh, I just slowed down the the movement of everything, so it's a little less distracting when you're working on these. 
If this is meant to be a background to song lyrics or something, you're not gonna want something that moves super fast. You're gonna want something that sort of sits back and doesn't uh, uh, distract from the lyrics. So there you go. This is uh, this is a way to loop masks. And so there are times when I'm working on emotion and I'm just not liking how it's looking. And um, so one of the techniques I've used in uh, the past two motion packs that I put together is mirroring. And uh, so I'll show you a, a, a motion here. And I just, uh, I wasn't really feeling uh, the movement of it. Maybe it was just that it kind of was kind of, I don't know, too much or kind of like made you, made people get like motion sickness or something. I don't know, something about it wasn't working for me. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, I added this um, effect and we'll, you can find it under distort mirror. Now you can always find uh, effects under the effects and presets and it's often a faster way to work. So if I just typed in M-I-R, it, it'll, uh, it'll come up with mirror there. So what I need to do is I need to get the mirror point into the center of this uh, composition here. And since our frame is 1280, if I set it to 640, uh, now it um, created a mirror. So what it does is it sort of reflects uh, one side. Um, you can you can try it both ways. So this way the the um, the motion is is going this way. Oh, I didn't even show you how it looked in the beginning, did I? Oh, I know I did. Yeah. So it just kind of swirls around here. Uh, but by adding the mirror onto it, um, now it's sort of uh, now it has some symmetry to it. So it it feels a little more stable and maybe a little less distracting than the uh, than the other way. If I set the reflect angle to 180, um, I can now get them uh, get them so they're going up. Um, so if I so it's the difference between this and this, you know. So this I feel like kind of makes me want to fall over because everything is going swirling in the same direction. But this way, it kind of has some gravity to it. It has some, uh, I don't know, it feels a little more solid. Um, so let's go ahead and go back into our comp and let's play around with this mirroring idea. So if I drill down into the, the uh, comp until we get to the mask that we uh, first pre-composed here. Um, so since our the composition that we already created there was already it's already symmetrical so what we need to do is break that symmetry so we could uh we could go into the rotation of this layer by hitting r we could uh, set it to 45 degrees here so now our um our mask is uh, sort of going this way and you know where it's kind of uh it's not we're we're fine we're seeing the edges there and then it's kind of ending here but we'll just we'll go with it. Uh, you can play around with it on your own if you want to um, uh, keep experimenting. So now that we've got this going one direction here, which is a, a great band. Um, so now we've got all of our. Uh, that was a joke. They're terrible. Uh, we've got all of our um, all of our masks going one way here. So now if we wanted to just really uh, create some symmetry here, I could drop the mirror onto our top composition here, set it to 640. Um, so now we've got uh, now we've got something a little a little more interesting here. I don't know. it's kind of kind of cool looking. I mean, uh, so you can play around and you can get some different looks. What happens if we make it go the other way? Now they are now they're going up rather than um, rather than down so you know this is a this is an easy way to get some cool looks uh, I tried I done mirroring on clouds on masks on particles um, there's a lot of there's a lot of way different ways that you can mirror things and have them have it look all right so we're gonna move on to uh, coloring your motion and this is very important because it doesn't matter how nice the motion how, how nice the animation is if it uh, it just looks ugly. Um, so one of my favorite sites to get um, free photos from is a site called Unsplash. And I've used a couple of their images for um, motions. And they're uh, just free uh, photos. You can do whatever you want with them. You can make stuff to sell or do whatever you want. Um, so go ahead, grab uh, some, some uh, couple pictures from this site. Um, and bring it into After Effects and we're gonna play around with them. 
Uh, so I'm going to create a new composition again. And I'm going to drop one of the photos that I got into my composition. And hit S to sort of scale it down so it fits. So uh, when I'm colorizing photos, often one of the first things I'll do is I'll, um, is I'll add a tint to it. And uh, maybe I'll set it to 50%. And this just sort of uh, uh, sucks some of the color out of the photo so that it's a little easier to work, work with when you're sort of pushing and pulling the colors. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. You know, one of the most classic ways to do um, color correction is through curves. Um, so, you know, you can, uh, I can drop the whites here. I can sort of bring up some reds and make it warm. Um, let's see, I can pull down the blues to sort of uh, increase the warmth of this, uh, of this look here. I can go to the greens and maybe I can, um, let's see here, I can pull out some of the green in the highlights and I can put in some of the green in the low lights there. So this is just, uh, this is like the tried and true way of uh, adjusting colors in, you know, Photoshop, After Effects that sort of thing uh, you know but there's there's other ways to do color correction and I, and I found some ways uh, some little some little cheats that got me some really cool uh, really cool looks so I'll I'll show you those now so I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and uh, you know one of the one of the plugins I found to be really helpful is this uh, video copilot free plugin called color vibrance and I'll try to put a link to that uh, in the description um, it's uh, at first it doesn't it doesn't really seem like it's that powerful, but I'll show you what happens when you sort of combine um, uh, instances of this effect. So I'm gonna add Video Copilot Color Vibrance to my photo here, and uh, uh, let's see here. So I think the first thing I'll do is I'll go into my color, and I'm I'm gonna try a color that's not so intense. I'm gonna well, we can try leaving it at this green, and I'm gonna bring down the um, bring down the uh, the intensity of it. So uh, the where the where the key comes in with this plugin is by doing different instances of this. So I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate that layer. So I'm gonna select this color. Now I'm gonna try I'm gonna try uh, a different color here. Um, so by trying a different color and by sort of playing around with the intensity of it uh, the the uh, the different instances of the filter sort of interact with one another and you can get some really cool looks here so now that I have two of these maybe I'll go back to my green and maybe now I'll now I'll play around with this and see if I can uh, I don't know I'll just play around with it until it until I think it looks nice let's see here let's try maybe some reds so just play around with it and uh, and see what comes from it. So this is really nice here. I like this. I like this look a lot. So I got it by by doing a a green and then by adding a purple on top of it. Um, so it just it has a nice look to it. And maybe I'll add a uh, vignette. So I'll add a new adjustment layer. Curves. I'll uh, drop that down. There you go. And now I'm going to put this adjustment layer underneath the other adjustment layer. And I'm going to double click the uh, ellipse tool. You can change the shape of your ellipse tool by clicking and holding down. But since it's on ellipse, I'm going to double click. Now I need to set the mask to subtract. I'm going to hit MM uh, to bring up the mask properties. Maybe I'll set it to 400. So now we've got a mask there, so it sort of brings the focus in a little bit. And uh, you may notice if you're getting some banding issues, uh, if you see like stripes uh, going across your image here, uh, what you want to do to fix that is uh, you can, in your project pane here, you'll see it says 8 bits uh, per channel. So if I hold Option and click on that, it is now 16 bits per channel, which, uh, which is going to get rid of some banding issues when you're working with uh, gradient colors like this. Um, so if you see any banding, just set it to 16. There's really no reason to go to 32, uh, not unless you're doing very specific uh, things with super bright colors. 
Uh, so this is this is one way to colorize this. Now I'll show you uh, even just one more step that we can add to this to play around with more colors. So I'm going to add even another adjustment layer. Now I'm going to go to color correction and go to colorama. And uh, it, could, it this is a pretty wild filter. Uh, at full strength, it just looks awful. But if we change the mode to color, and uh, if I hit T to bring up the opacity, and if I drop that down, let's do like 25%. Uh, so now if I turn on and off this layer, you can notice that it's, it's kind of playing with the colors a little bit. It's sort of adding, it's sort of adding some colors into these waves here. Uh, so uh, what I can do now is I can go to the input phase in Colorama and I can go to phase shift. And now if I drag this, uh, it's gonna, it's just gonna push and pull my colors just a little bit. And, uh, and it just, it just tweaks your colors ever so slightly, but, um, it, it really adds a lot of depth because it's adding, it's adding new, new colors in, uh, inside all these other colors. So just play around till you find something that you like. And, uh, you know, you can play around upping the opacity. Uh, but if you go too high with the colorama, it's really not going to look good. It's going to look best at about 25%, maybe even 20%. Uh, it's going to look best when it's subtle. Um, you know, we can try dropping another photo in under all this and just see just see what it does to that photo. So I'm going to drop another photo in, and uh, and maybe I'll just play around until um, until I get something I like for this one. So maybe I'll just try pushing in. And pulling the colors here. Maybe I'll turn off Colorama for now. Just pushing and pulling and we're just trying to find something nice here. You know you could just you could do this all day. Uh, just playing around with different colors. Uh, oh, here, here's a, here's something to know about uh, Vibrance is it crashes a lot. So it just crashed on me, and it tends to crash the most when I'm playing around in the colors. So what I would tell you is to save a lot when you're using Color Vibrance. Now, Color Vibrance doesn't seem to crash when. Uh, like once you've set the colors, but it seems to crash a lot when when you're playing around in the colors. So uh, so it just crashed After Effects for me. So that's a great. So right now I'm gonna uh, show you how to combine effects um, with Fractal Noise specifically, because Fractal Noise is a really powerful plugin. Uh, but it's even more powerful when you combine it with other with other uh, filters or plugins. Um, so I'm going to go and make a new composition. We will just make this, why don't we do it 10 seconds long. Let's do a new solid. And we're going to add our uh, fractal noise here. OK, so um, what I would like to do with this fractal noise is I'd like to create some bars out of the fractal noise that sort of pulse. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set the evolution here. Go to 10 seconds. Let's set it to like 5. Now if we want it to loop, we just go to our evolution options, cycle evolution, uh, and we'll set it to 5. Now remember, if we want it to loop properly, we have to scoot that over one frame so we don't get duplicate frames. OK, so we've got our uh, fractal noise going here. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a mosaic filter to it. And uh, I'm just going to open up my effects and presets here. And I'm just going to type in uh, mosaic. And we're going to add that to our layer here. Now mosaic, you can adjust. Uh, this is sort of like the cops effect. Uh, when you got uh, like a naked redneck running through the streets, they're going to be putting this over his little uh, his junk so you don't see it. <laughs> So, uh, but there are other uses for the mosaic uh, other than uh, obscuring uh, things that no one needs to see. Uh, so what I can do here is I can, um, if I make the horizontal blocks uh, to one, uh, now I'm only getting the mosaic going across this way, and this is a this is a nice look. 
uh, but it's it's too subtle right now. What I need to do is I need to play with the fractal noise until um, I can get these bars to pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast maybe. Then I'm going to maybe decrease the brightness. I'll also go into the transform and increase the scale here. That can often, uh, often help uh, with these. Let's see, maybe the scale should be like 200. Okay, so now if I play this, now I've got these sort of pulsing bars here, which um, which is a uh, which can be a great element to add to uh, to emotion here. Uh, so this is uh, this is one option here. Um, we can uh, we can push this a little further. We can actually rotate our um, our layer here, forty five degrees. Now I, I think I'll make this solid. A little bit bigger so that it uh, covers our frame. Maybe I need to make it like 2,500. Uh, looks like I need to do just a little bit more. Let's see. So just get it uh, so it covers the composition here. Now we can um, we can add a mirror effect here. So I'll add a new adjustment layer, and then I'll do a, a mirror effect here. So we're just combining filters here to uh, get some different looks. Change that to 640. Okay, now I now I, uh, I just generated this uh, this super quick uh, just sort of pattern here, and uh, you know you could use this layer, and now I could I could overlay this layer on a on a on a picture. Um, so it's. You know it's moving pretty fast. If I wanted to slow down the pulsing, I would just have to slow down the evolution. I would set it to two or one or something like that. But for this demonstration, it's fine. Let's go find one of those uh, photos there, and we'll just uh, we'll just drop it in, and then we'll uh, drop it in. We'll change the change it to overlay or something like that. So. Um, so uh, now it's being overlaid on this photo, and also notice that the photo is being mirrored too, which uh, which could be a good look, uh, depending on what you're going for. If you didn't want the uh, the photo to be mirrored, uh, what you'd want to do is just uh, select the mirror, the adjustment layer with the mirror, and then uh, our bars here, and then pre-compose them, and now we'll uh, set it to overlay. And now we're not we're not getting our photo mirrored. So if if you did want to mirror it, you have that option. But if you don't, then uh, just pre-compose it. Uh, so this is a good option, a uh, good way to use fractal noise. Uh, okay, so now we're going to use fractal noise uh, with a uh, with a filter called Vector Blur, and we're going to make uh, some cool fog with that. So we're going to make a new composition. I'm gonna add a solid. I'm gonna add fractal noise to that. And uh, let's see. I'll I'll increase the scale, maybe to about 250. Um, and let's go ahead and we're gonna go to blur. I'm gonna do vector blur. I'm gonna change this type to uh, direction fading. I'll show you what it looks like if you just keep it natural. It uh sort of gets this. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. it. Sort of looks like water reflections, maybe like caustics or something. Uh, but I'm going to change it to direction fading, and then this is going to create our um, our fog look. So maybe I'll increase the scale to 300 of our fractal noise. Um, and I think that that looks pretty good for now. So let's go ahead and do the evolution. Set a keyframe there. Let's let's do like two for the evolution. Let's go ahead and check that out. Now vector blur really slows down uh, the renders here, so just keep that in mind when you're working with it. It's a uh, it's kind of a slow plugin. Oh, and, I, and uh, we're not getting a loop here because we did not set our uh, loop options here. Uh, so we got to do the same thing that you know how to do very well now. Turn that on, set it to two, and then we got to scoot this one over, one frame. Maybe I'll set this to like a quarter resolution so it renders faster. 
So now we've got our fog, and uh, you know I use this I use this a lot when I'm trying to sort of create like a mist or a fog or something. It just uh, it just looks really nice, um, especially when you make it subtle and you turn down the opacity a lot. That's when it looks the best. Um, so one more thing we can do to this fog here is we can have it uh, sort of rolling across the screen. So we'll uh, go to offset turbulence and. Um, you know, this is going to break our seamless loop, so I guess we didn't need to do the seamless loop before since we're playing with the offset, but whatever. All right, so I'm just going to drag uh, drag the offset turbulence on the X, so it's uh, so our fog is moving across the screen here. And uh, that's looking very nice. Now, I find that the, the, the way this fog works the best is if you uh, sort of duplicate the, the layer and um, sort of have two versions of it. So I uh, duplicated the layer. I'm going to go to the evolution options and I'm going to turn up the random seed just so uh, so we get two different looks for the fog because otherwise your fog would look identical uh, on both layers. Um, so what I'm going to do on this top layer here is uh, I'm going to have this top layer fog moving even faster. So I'm going to go to that last keyframe there, and I'm going to set it to, let's go with like 3,000. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, go to the opacity on this layer, and I'll turn it down to, I don't know, maybe 40%. And uh, I'll also turn down the opacity on the bottom layer to maybe to like 50%. And so by having two layers moving at different speeds, um, and I think it's, uh, I think my top layer is moving a little bit too fast there, so I'll I'll, I'll uh, turn it down maybe to 2600 or something. This might be too fast anyways. but um, So what you get is you get sort of multiple layers of the fog and it gives it, it, gives it a little bit more dimension so, uh, so it doesn't look quite so flat. So it doesn't look like an, it's on a single flat plane. Now we could, uh, we could um, Let's see here. What are we gonna do with this? We'll uh, we'll create a back black drop for us. So we'll create a new solid, make it black, pop it behind this, and uh, now we're going to we're gonna loop this fog here. So by selecting all three layers, I'm gonna hit Command Shift C to recompose, and do the same technique we did at the beginning there. You don't need me explaining this by now. So drag those layers. Let's see here. Oh right, I'm doing the wrong technique here. Okay, so what? Yeah, we we just have to do the simple fade here. So we're gonna fade one layer into the next. Now it's important to put that black solid because that fractal noise had uh, was gonna have transparency on it because both of our layers were not 100% there. Um, so it's in it's important to have that black solid so that our fade here works properly. So now we've got our fog looping here. So we've got a nice seamless loop here. Uh, so you know what I could do with this fog now is uh, now that it's looping is I could gra grab a photo. This photo is from Unsplash, um, and uh, I'm going to pre-compose these two layers here again because one is fading into the other. So if we, if we just did change the, uh, the, the transfer mode on these right now, uh, you would see a pop right here as it got to the end layer because this layer would be, the, you'd be able to see through the layers. So we want to pre-compose these layers before we play around with the, uh, with the, with the modes, with the transfer modes. So now, uh, now that's pre-composed, I can set it to something like screen. Let me shrink my forest here. I think I found this photo just by looking up like trees or forest or something on, on Unsplash. Um, so now if I uh, now if I do a render with uh, with the screen mode set on the fog over this already kind of foggy photo, uh, it's really going to sell the effect uh, that you know it's uh, this isn't going to look like a CG image. This is going to look pretty natural here with. Uh, with this fog rolling in. So let's just check that out. Cool, you know, I think the fog is moving probably about twice as fast as it should, uh, but you can play around with that and slow your fog down uh, if, you, if you're not liking the look of it.
One thing I, I would like to do here is I would like to have the fog only on the bottom half of the screen. So I'm going to select my rectangular uh, mask tool. I'm going to sort of draw a mask right here. Then I'm going to hit MM to go in the feather. Maybe put it to like 700 or something like that. Um, so that way the, the fog sort of fades out till it's the top here. And we just have the fog moving along the, moving along the bottom here. And um, you know, that's a, that is one good looking motion right there. And it loops and uh, you know, we could add some color correction like we, uh, or, or some color to it before with uh, maybe vibrance uh, if it's not crashing our computer and making us want to uh, punch our monitor. Uh, but when it does work, it works really well. Um, so, you know, play around. With so that brings us to the end of this very long, uh, very uh, packed full of goodness tutorial. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully with all these techniques, you'll be able to make some cool looping motions. Um, I'm also going to include um, a After Effects project file that is going to let you do a five minute countdown on your own there. So you'll just be able to open up the, uh, the project file and um, you can change the font, uh, just select all the layers, change the font, adjust the... Uh, just the kerning on it so it looks good. And uh, yeah, you'll be all set to do uh, some pretty sweet five minute countdowns, make some motions. Uh, yeah, and I hope you have some fun with it. Um, yeah, I've been learning a lot over these past few months and uh, I'm sure I'll be learning a lot more about doing these looping motions uh, over time. But uh, yeah, until next time guys, it's been